Welcome back guys. I have finally set everything up here in my new apartment. A lot smaller, but I can still get the same setup going. So in this video I have another review and this one is pretty big for me because I only have one TV currently and I've always had TVs. So in this video I'm going to be doing a review on a projector. And this projector is relatively cheap. It's one of the cheaper ones that you can buy for 1080. And it is pretty small compared to what there has been. So I'm gonna review it and see if it's really worth the price at 1080. And for a second TV. So this projector is from Crenova. And it is the XPE 498 projector. Of course, like all my videos, I'll link it down below. But, this is the one that I have, so let's open it up and see what's in the box. Already, right away, like, it's very nice. It's white, it's got that gold shiny lettering on it. It looks nice already, but let's figure out what it looks like once we actually open this thing up. Okay, so seems pretty well packaged. Gift voucher for stuff. I usually put that stuff in there. Uh, 12 month warranty, cool. This looks like all of your cables that you need to have. Apparently you can just hook this up to whatever, PlayStation, Xbox, and get that out of the way. Very solid box, very well packaged. Wow, this is a lot smaller than I thought it was gonna be. There's not a whole lot in the box either. This is pretty much it. Mini LED projector. That's another thing I like about this. Instead of using the standard bulbs in here, they actually use LEDs so it lasts longer. But plastic all around. That's probably why it's so cheap. So we've got our buttons here on top. I don't know what most of these do. Probably for screen, going through your menus, power, etc. And then we've got power out on the back. Looks like we can put in an SD card. We can put in a VGA for what have you. There's the vents. We'll see if we can take that apart and clean that out. And that, that, I'm sure, does something. Let's see what it includes in its little accessories box. Oh, look at that. It actually comes with HDMI cable and a flat one at that. I'm pretty sure this is a regular one. High speed with Ethernet. Huh, never seen that one before. Moving on, you've got component to your auxiliary jack, your power cable. Look at that, a little tiny cute remote. I'm guessing this is your stand for the bottom so you can put it in. Yeah, it's your stand for the bottom so you can angle it whichever way you need. And last but not least, we've got this. I guess there's not really a whole lot in here. Oh, there we go. So it shows you what the different parts are, how the remote works, how to use it, and of course your screen sizes and how far away it needs to be for those sizes. Look at that, up to 200 inch display, have my whole wall. So after going over the manual and figuring this out a little bit more, obviously these are going to be your up, down, uh, your volume on both sides. So up button, down button, volume up and volume down. Then you also have the middle button, which is your enter, play and pause. This one down here is going to be menu and exit. This one is source, so going through your different source inputs, and of course your power. 
And I also looked on here and there's no easy way for these vents to clean them. The only thing I can see is just take the screws off the bottom and just take the whole shell off so you can clean it after whatever amount of time when it starts getting dusty. So over here on the right hand side you have a speaker, your HDMI, of course your AV and other headphone jacks, USB, and right here is an intake and you also have another intake on the back and the exhaust is going to be here. So keep that in mind depending on where you put it so you don't have hot air blowing in your direction. Moving to the back, I've already gone over this, the power. This is the only one I didn't know, the Keystone. Apparently this has to do with uh, focusing. You use that in correlation with the wheel up here to get a nice, crisp, clean looking picture. So that's, uh, that's pretty much it for that. I'm going to install the little foot on there and then take you on the journey of installing this. Okay, so I have migrated to the bedroom area and I'm going to have it set up on that wall. I'm gonna have to move that guy. But um, yeah, I no longer have the TV that was in here, but I do have the PlayStation 3, the old school, really dusty, haven't used it in a while. But the thing is, there's different viewing angles and what I want to do is I actually want to mount it right above the bed on a shelf so it shines right there. Um, now I could do that, but at the same time if I do that and I want the PlayStation 3 hooked up to it, the PlayStation 3 has to be somewhat nearby because the HDMI cable has to hook up from there to the PlayStation. So that's another thing to think about. And if I looked it up on here, sadly this is centimeters, I don't know centimeters, but from the back wall to the front wall is going to be approximately like 365, I think it was, 360 something centimeters. So that's like a 120 something inch display. So what I could do is also move this to the end of the bed and have it project that way. Um, but yeah, another thing I also figured out, which is pretty cool, there's another hole right here for a tripod mount. So if you wanna hook this up to any sort of mount tripod-ish thing, that's another option to do for this. Okay, so I'm playing around with this right now to figure out what I want. Now that is a decent sized, I guess, television display. That's about how big my other TV was. It's probably a 50 inch right there. But something I also found out is, I get, if you're into projectors, you probably think I'm stupid, but I don't know anything about it. The little keystone thing back here, if I have it up on my lap and then I do that, it changes the angle. So if you have it like mounted on the ceiling and then you have it come up like that, it becomes flat. If you have it down here, then it's like, it's angled up. So you can change that. Something cool. And here, listen to this thing. This is a, a little bit louder than I was anticipating too. Yeah, so a little bit louder, but I have a feeling once I get the sound going, it's not going to be very noticeable, but we'll see. It does come with a little tiny built-in speaker. I'm gonna test and see how good that is. But now I'm gonna see how giant this screen is gonna be if I put it on the other side of the bed, because I'm at the edge right now. Yeah, this thing can totally work way back here. I'm at right up against my wall, and if I mount it up here, that's gonna be a nice big old TV. Obviously gonna have to move that, can't see but I can read the text. I'm sure it's gonna get a lot better once I turn the light off. And I just have to fiddle around with the little key thing on the back, because when I put it at one, the top is clear. When I put it at the other, the bottom is clear, and they kind of switch back and forth. But yeah, this is huge, and I can see it just as clear as it was up there. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and put up a shelf kind of like what I have over there, right above the bed, so I can just have myself a projector TV. 
Okay, so I've got my room pretty dark. Got some blackout curtains with just a little bit open just so I can get some light in here. There's a projector. I've got it up on that shelf that I made. One thing that I really do not like is how short these cables are. I get that it is kind of a cheap projector, but they're so short that they basically end like right down here. So what I did is the power cable basically stops like right there. So I had to get an extension over to my wall. So it's just kind of hanging there. I couldn't make it to an outlet. And then the HDMI cable goes about the same length. And I actually put my PS3 under the bed and I'm hoping that'll work. I can just use my controller and turn it on. I'm not gonna be doing anything heavy, so it's not gonna get ridiculously hot under there. But this is almost my entire wall and it looks really good. I do have white walls. I didn't buy one of the projector screens, but just having it on here, like I can read everything perfectly fine. Um, it does, I don't know if you can see it with the camera. Once you get in a, a little bit closer, you can see all of the pixels that are on there. Yeah, you can see that, but I can see that from from decently far back. I don't think you can see it on the camera. But for the price, this is a huge, huge projector. So I'm gonna hook up my PS3 and see what I can get. I'm probably gonna throw on some Netflix or something and see the picture quality. I'm out of here. Maybe while I'm gone, you can come up with some new ways to antagonize me with your bullshit. Where are you going? I'm gonna go see your wife. See, now you're trying to be hurtful. So that was a little preview. The little speaker that's on there, it's not as terrible as I thought it would be. It is decent enough to get you loud audio for any sort of Netflix or movie or something like that. But again, it's just one tiny speaker, so I really suggest you get um, some kind of sound bar or something, but another problem I have with this, it only has one HDMI out, one. So you can have one thing set up with this. Like right now I have my PlayStation 3, but if I also wanted to hook up a cable box, I wouldn't be able to. Or if I wanted to hook up a sound bar to this, I wouldn't be able to so many different things so if you do want multiple ones like multiple hdmi you're gonna have to buy an hdmi splitter and another thing that i figured out i was not getting audio off netflix if you just go on netflix and then you go into um the audio and subtitles you're gonna have to change it to original and not 5.1 for some reason, it doesn't pick up 5.1 at all. It has to be original for it to even play. So, I mean, overall, this is really cool for getting like a big, big TV for cheap, but the quality of the actual picture, you can tell that it is blown up. Especially with this one, would it, it's, it goes up to 1080, but it's native is 480. So you can definitely see that it's not as clear and crisp as a regular TV would be. And I mean, if you wanna pay 80 to $100, just so you can have an entire, basically your wall as a TV, this is awesome. But if you want, a clear picture at a larger size, you're gonna have to go up in price. And I mean, for the money, I think this is super cool and I would definitely buy it again. Um, at, like I said, the problems, the fan noise, the one HDMI cable and the cables just not being long enough, they can improve a few things on this, but overall, I'm, I was actually kind of surprised on a few things with as small and cheap as it is, it did pretty well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little review and uh, watch out for more videos.
Hey guys, thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. If you haven't already, make sure you follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram so you can get some behind the scenes stuff that hasn't happened yet and unreleased content that no one else has seen. And if you haven't already, watch that video. And if you watch that video, watch that video. And if you've watched both of those videos already, make sure you subscribe down here.